Welcome to the channel everybody. I'm Evan and today I'm going to talk to you about dreadnoughts, specifically the Contemptor dreadnought. I feel like that base chassis is just a little bit boring and I'd like to show you a couple things to make it much more interesting. All right guys, for my Contemptor, I am doing these colors. This is for blood drinkers. Feel free to substitute this with whatever you want for whatever chapter you're going after. All right, so right at the beginning, you can tell this thing's a little bit different. On his right shoulder, you can see I've green stuffed in a pretty ugly Blood Angel blood drop, but it's something and it adds a lot of character to that right side. Then if you look just left to center, you'll see I've got a shield. That's actually from an infantry model, but it looks really good on this Dreadnought. The big things I'm trying to avoid on this Contemptor are large open surfaces that don't have any kind of detail, whether that's things like painted on freehand, weathering, uh, battle damage, or something customized like the shield or that blood drop. These are the kind of things that'll really personalize it. It'll really ground it in your army, and when people see it, it'll make sense. It'll click in their head, and they'll just think, man, that's a great looking dreadnought. All right, so, so far I've gotten down my reds, which I am working up all the way from burnt red through orange. The orange is going to be used pretty sparingly. It's just going to be my highest highlight. After that, I came in and did my copper. Later on, this will get highlighted with silver. Right now, it's just a flat base color. Don't know if any of you guys have ever used this stuff before. This is streaking grime. It's an enamel wash. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Don't use your good brushes on it, and you can honestly achieve similar things with Nuln Oil or Agrax or Shade. All that this is for is to force the detail in the recesses to really stand out. As you can see, I'm going to wipe off most of the stuff on the surface. It's going to tint what was there and darken it down just a little bit, but mostly you're looking at the crevices and any detail lines in there that are going to really stand out with this. Some of what that old t-shirt wasn't able to get, I'm going to come back in with these. It's similar to a q-tip, just helps me get into the nooks and crannies. As I'm cleaning this stuff up, since it's an enamel, I've got some white spirit. Obviously, if that is a acrylic base, you wouldn't use that. Alright, now you can see this has given us some really beautiful tones. The red is much more vibrant, and it just has a lot more life to it after that wash. And now that that wash is down, I can go ahead and put in some of my silver highlights. This is going to go over top of the copper and only on the raised surfaces. And since we got something on the right pauldron, I figured we should put something on the left as well. Kind of balance that out. So what I'm doing here is I'm just free handing in IX for the knight. Obviously you can put whatever you want up here. You can put a chapter insignia. Um, you can put a name of the dreadnought. Put your angry marine face. Whatever you want to do, just don't leave it open. Don't leave it this big, boring surface. Coming back down to the leg, I'm going to put another blood drop in. This one's going to look slightly different than the one above it, but it is going to be a little bit redundant. If I was more creative, I could probably come up with something much better. But for now, we're going to go with this. I'm going to lay down a base coat of black. Then I'm going to come in with a mix of coal black and bull titanium white. I'm just going to work through my gray values and kind of fade this from a black at the top left all the way down to white at the bottom right. And then put in a light spot up in the top left. I'll make it kind of look like it's a jewel. Um, make it not look so 2D. From there I'm going to grab my light umber and I'll come in and do all the scrolls and the purity seals on here and also the skull up on the shield. That's going to be white eventually, but this light umber is a really good base tone for whites. Then to make it appear more 3D, I'm going to highlight this upper surface only. So I've got my white mixed in with my light umber, and I'm just coming back and doing passes on the upper edges of that scroll. Then it's time for some what turned out to be really clunky freehand. Uh, text is not my thing. I obviously need a lot more practice with this, but that's what I'm here for. I'm painting, I'm practicing, I'm getting better. Don't be afraid to tackle something you're not good at. The worst thing that can happen is you mess it up and you paint over it. Grabbing purple, moving on to all the actual whack part. 
whack, yeah, the whack parts, the wax parts of the purity seals. Then adding in a little bit of bold titanium white and just using that on the upper surfaces. For my greens, which are going to be the wreath and the wings on the right shoulder, I'm using a camo green and then highlighting it out with a green. This gives you a nice bright highlight, but not too obnoxious. Moving on to the base, you can see he's standing on a large rock formation. And all I'm going to do is put some warm gray on here. It's going to give it some of those earth tones since that gray already has a little bit of brown. And that's going to play real well when I put the actual um, light umber down on the base, which is going to represent some of the dirt. In order to get some detail on here, I'm going to dry brush it with a very, very slightly shaded bold titanium white, just a touch into the gray. And that's going to go on all my edges of the rocks. After that, putting down my PVA glue mixture and putting on a little bit of flock. I'm going to do this in two passes. I've got this flock that I'm putting down, then I've got a little bit brighter green. And it's nice to just have a little bit of variety. Makes your bases not look so uniform. A little bit ahead of myself here. Going ahead and doing the base room since I'm down here working on the base. But it's getting close. Still counts. Going back to my pure orange, I'm going to do some edge highlights on this. I'm going a little bit overboard on this one. There's going to be edge highlights on almost every surface, every hard surface anyway. Usually I just do upper surfaces or visual interest areas. So if you don't feel like doing the entire model and saving yourself some time, just focus on the areas that you're going to see from a 45 degree angle from the top, or areas around the face, the hands, the weapons. Those are the things people are normally going to look at. After that, I grabbed my secret weapon, a super professional piece of pluck foam. I keep these around, these are the onesie twosies that you pull out to make space for your models. They work really great for battle damage. Just tear off a really small piece like you see here, and then you can dip it in things like your primary color. If you want to get a little bit of variation in there, you can use grays, blacks, silvers, Mainly focus on your edges, your corners, where wear would normally show up. Or if you've got something that you want to show up like a scratch or splatter from a weapon, you can do it that way too. Make sure you don't overdo this. It's really easy to get carried away and it's really hard to go back on. If you do get carried away, you can come back in with your main color and stipple that a little bit over top and it'll erase some of it, but it's still not going to look quite like it did. Alright, and that Dreadnought's done. At the end of the day, this Dreadnought is not going to win any painting competitions, but I'm super happy with it. It's definitely a Blood Angels slash Blood Drinkers Dreadnought, and it looks just a little bit different from everybody else's. If you enjoyed that, guys, please hit that thumbs up. It really helps me out, helps the channel out. If you want to see some more of this kind of stuff, hit subscribe. I've got more videos coming out every week. But above all, thanks for letting me share your day. Be a little part of it. I really do appreciate that. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.